Good day, students. Uh, welcome to UNISA. This is the Student Retention Unit bringing you a broadcast. So we would like to welcome you to the university and we thank you for registering with us. So today we want to tell you a little bit about what we do as a Student Retention Unit. So we have what we call the First Day Experience Program. So the aim is to provide you with extended support since you are coming here for the first time. So it's a crucial information at, at, at a point where we feel you need it. So we're going to be with you throughout your student journey. So we bring you information that we believe is, is helpful to you. So in partnering with you as a student, we want to integrate all the broad information and support services that the, that, that the institution offers so that we ensure that you receive all the re relevant and important information and we want you to have it on time. So what we do as a unit is that we send out FYE emails. So on those emails, we would remind you of important things that you should be doing at a particular time. And then we will direct you to more support to say for assignments, this is where you should click for information on certain things, we'll give you links. So the emails will also have the links. So we also give you the broadcasts of which we invite people from di different departments in the institution so that they come share information with you. So today we have Mr. Shabangu from education and we have, um, so from career development. So they'll bring you information that we feel is important. And so please do pay attention. So on our broadcast, we'll also have things like uh, someone from library services to, to help you prepare for when you need to borrow books or use the library and someone from um, DCCD who's going to take you through exam preparation, assignment preparation and all that information. But we also want you to also tell us more, more about what you want. So we might be giving you information, but you might have ideas of what other students might need. So please send us emails to, to inform us about that. So about we also have a mailbox. So our mailbox is, is a way of communicating with you students. So we sh will share the mailbox towards the end. You can send us queries when you are struggling with anything, whether it's college related, whether it's it's a personal issue, we'll be able to direct you to the right people. So please make sure you use our mailbox. We also have our website, which has all the information about what we do for our first year students. So please go to our website. The link is also towards the end of the presentation. So you can go to our website and you'll find our contact details there and you can communicate with us and we'll respond to you within 48 hours. And we also have what we, we call the First Year Experience Massive Open Online course. So this course is, is a form of orientation and it's, 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 it's designed to make sure that we familiarize you as a student with the environment that UNISA is. So it has a UNISA readiness tool preparing for ODL. It has information on UNISA, um, using my UNISA library orientation, digital literacy. So Please make sure that you take part in our FYE MOOC. It, it has a very relevant information that you might, that you will actually need throughout your studies. So it's orientation that you can always go back to. So it's not once off. It's, it's at your finger, uh, at, 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 in your fingers actually, because you can even use your cell phone to get into the MOOC. So on that, I would like to welcome Mr. Shabangu. He's going to give you very important information. So please pay attention and ask us questions. I'll respond to you and um, share share the video also with other students. And let's welcome Mr. Shabangu. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity given to talk to our first year students. As I was introduced, I'm coming from the College of Education Student Support Office. We mainly assist our students with relevant information regarding the four student work stages within the university. The four student work stages refers to the first stage, which will be application, and also refers to the second stage, which is about registration, and the third stage, which is about tuition and learner support, as well as the fourth stage, which is about graduateness and alumni relation. 
but my presentation will mainly focus on student work stage two and student work stage three. The understanding is that we are now communicating with first year students who had already applied, who are admitted, who have just registered for modules for various proposed qualifications. Now, by this time, we expect that every one of us should have registered for those modules coming from the curriculum of the qualification that you are studying for. Now, the most important thing is to familiarize yourself with the curriculum. This is the qualification you have chosen. Now, you need to know and understand the curriculum better so that every time when registration times come, you are able to choose correct modules. Even if you may be assisted at any self-help desk in any of our regional centers, but it's always advisable to know which modules you will register for. Now, the curriculum for most qualifications, we are referring to a higher certificate program or any diploma course, as well as any bachelor degree. You will have your first level modules. Now, first level is referring to your first year of study. Students will have an opportunity to select modules. Now, when you select modules, take note if any of the modules that you are selecting, if it does have any core requisite. A core requisite may be any other module that is required to be registered along with that module that you are choosing meaning the content or the information inside the module, you require information from both modules for you to be able to progress with your studies. Core requisites will refer to those modules that you must register together. During registration, it's also important to know that when we register, we are restricted to a certain number of modules that we can take. Either it could be semester modules or year modules. Students can take a maximum of 10 modules per year. That equals to 120 credits. If you want to take lesser number of modules, as a first year student, you can only take a minimum of three modules in your first year of study meaning in your second year of study and all the years thereafter, you will have to make sure that you take a minimum of at least four modules. Now, when registering modules, it's important to understand, is this a module, a semester module or a year module? Because that will assist us in taking a decision as to register, for what we can be able to work with. In other words, if you were to register for semester modules, you can only take up to a maximum of five modules. And in a year, it gives us 10 modules. When you register, it's always important to note that registration can be done online or at any of the regional centers. But as students, we must also be aware that when we do an online registration or at self-help, it's always important to take note of the registration fee that is required. Even if we may be NSFA student or not, but it's always important to take note. Secondly, to follow up to see whether your temporary registration is being activated. Because if the TP registration is not activated, it will be not easy for us to access the electronic study material. We always encourage our students to say once they are registered, 
why the dispatch section is still packaging your study material, you can access the electronic study material in the meantime. This access of electronic study material will allow you time to familiarize yourself with your study material. Now, what do we expect to be sent to us as study material? For every module that a student will register for, there is a tutorial letter 101 and there is a study guide. These are not the only study material we may receive. There may be a supplementary tutorial letter, either a 102, 103, or a 200 series, 300 series, up to 500 series. Any information that is supplementary to your study material may also come in the form of a tutorial letter. Now, the very first study material that we need to familiarize ourselves with is a tutorial letter 101. As I've already mentioned, that for every module, there's a tutorial letter 101. Inside the tutorial letter 101, we will be getting information or details about the primary lecturer for the module, in which department is the module offered, what is the contact number of the lecturer, the secretary of the department in case we are looking for the lecturer and the lecturer is not there. Secondly, inside a tutorial letter 101, we will be able to see whether there is any prescribed book that we need to buy as part of the study package or not. Thirdly, inside the tutorial letter 101, we will also be able to actually get our assignments. Now, assignments are a workload where we need to be able to acquire information from the content or the study guides or the prescribed book where applicable so that we can be able to prepare and submit our assignments. Assignments are very important because studying through a distance, submitting your assignments, this is a form of a support we could get from our lecturers because lecturers will mark our assignments and be able to guide us in a correct way as well as prepare us for examination for that module. We also need to communicate with our lecturer in terms of support. We will not only get the support through the marking of assignments. If there's any question regarding the content, the primary lecturer is the relevant person for us to contact so that they can be able to support us. Now, I just want us to look at the assignments. For every module, especially your semester module, Inside your tutorial letter 101, you will see that there will be two sets of assignments. There will be your first assignment and the second assignment. Now, those two assignments you will have for first semester and you will also have another assignment, one and two for second semester. Every assignment will have its own unique number. And every assignment must indicate an assignment number. Is this an assignment one? Is this an assignment two? This information will be helpful for the administration processes when these assignments are registered. Remember also to register your unique number for every assignment. It's different though with your year modules. Your year modules, you will be expected to submit your assignments during the year and prepare for your exams for October, November. Whereas a semester module, if we are registered for a semester one, 
we will be expected to submit all assignments prescribed for the module between the month of March and April so that we could be able to get the feedback for us to be able to prepare for examinations. Inside this tutorial letter 101, you will also take note of the due dates for submission of those assignments. It's important to plan our studies so that we can be able to meet all those deadlines for submission of assignments. Because any assignment that is submitted after the due date without arrangement with the primary lecturer will not be marked. Students have got an option of either submitting assignments through hard copies or submitting the assignments online. But over and above, you will come across an online module for every qualification. Now, an online module will not have a hard copy study material. An online modules, their assignments are strictly submitted online. There's no option for hard copy assignments. It's important to submit assignments one so that we can be able to get admission to an examination, so that we can be able to get a year mark. A year mark meaning that this will be a year mark that will contribute to your final mark that you will obtain from your exam. So it's very important to make sure that we submit our assignments which will assist us in getting guidelines from the lecturers as well as qualifying for examination as well as being able to acquire our year mark. Now, when it comes to that period of writing an exam, what do we need? As a first year student, it's important to note that you need to receive a final timetable with the confirmed dates and times when the exam for that module is written. You are advised to arrive at the exam venue at least 30 minutes before the start time. And you must be seated 15 minutes before the start time. You will be required to bring along your identity book or identity card in order to be allowed into an exam venue, you will also be required to bring along a copy of your timetable so that the invigilators can confirm if you were admitted to an exam. Make sure that you familiarize yourself with the exam venue so that when you go for your examination, you can arrive on time you know exactly where you are writing your exams. Normally, when we register during our registration period, you will, we will always have what we call a preliminary timetable. But the final timetable will be made available on my UNISA anytime from the first or second week of April for a semester module for a year module, it will be around August. So it's, it's important that we confirm that our exam date, our exam date as captured on the system that we are familiar with. It's very possible that the exam date may change from the preliminary timetable that was showing during registration. Now, it's also important that when we go for our examinations, that we must keep, there's a tear of sleep that you will always get when you sit in for an exam. That tear of sleep will serve as a proof that you attended, you wrote the exam, in case a, anything could happen to your script during the transportation between the exam venue and the university. Always keep this proof until the results are released so that we can be able 
to assist you in case of any challenge that may come which is beyond our control. Then that is the information that talks to registration, what we expect to get once we have received the study material, what information we should look for, what assignment we should do, and so on and so on and so on. Then it, we're now going over to a, a third student work stage, that is tuition and learner support. Now, tuition and learner support, even though UNISA is regarded as a distance university, but we've got support systems in place to support all our students. Just know that we've got e-tutors. These are tutors who support our students through online for a number of modules, especially first year modules. We also have face-to-face -face tutorials, but face-to-face -face tutorials is for other modules, not for all the modules. And these tutorials may only be offered in various regional centers. We just need to check with our regional center if there are any face-to-face -face tutorials for the modules we are registered for. And students must also access the MyUNISA portal. The MyUNISA portal is an online portal where UNISA students can use or utilize to access the electronic study material where UNISA students can be able to participate in group forums, where UNISA students can interact with other students online from other areas, where students can be able to submit even their assignments, where students can also take note of announcements from the university or from the lecturer or from their college or from their departments. This is the portal where most of the communication comes through. So as first year student, it is very important that we claim our logging details to my UNISA. We can log on to www.unisa.ac.za and click on My UNISA. For the first time, we can log in and claim our logging details. Once we've got access, we will be able to access your study material, your discussion classes, your e-tutors, group forums, and also be able to get information through announcement and also be able to submit our assignments online. Now, as a first year student, it is also important to take note of various service departments within the university, because as we start this journey, it will be important because in the near future, you may have an inquiry that may talk to registrations, an inquiry that may talk to matriculation exemption regarding our documents when we were admitted. You may have an inquiry that talk to the study material, an outstanding study material, or you have not received all the packages. You may also have an inquiry that talks to your study fees, you may also have an inquiry that talks to credits or exemptions applications. You may also have an inquiry that talks to RPL, recognition of prior learning. You may also have an inquiry that talks to examinations, which could be admission, timetable, exam venues, start time, and whatever regarding our exams, as well as we may also have inquiries about deferring our exams. The terminology we use is agrotet. If we are unable to write our exams, 
We need to talk to examination so that we can submit our applications to defer our exams to the next exam period. We may also have any inquiry that can relate to assignments. If our assignments are not registered, if we have not received an SMS notification and the likes and the likes. Now, this information about those service departments is also inside your tutorial letter 101. You will be able to see who to talk to, where to, to send my emails, who to contact if I've got inquiries about registrations, study material, study fees, my matriculation exemption, credits and exemptions applications, any query about RPL, about exam-related inquiries, as well as assignments. And if we have an inquiry, it is important to send your inquiry to the correct email address. And let us try always when we send inquiries through email to put our subject line. If it's an, it's an exam related inquiry to say exam timetable. If it's a study fees, if we can just mention under the subject line, what is the inquiry about? So that when our emails are received, they can be escalated to the relevant section so that those service departments can be able to respond to us within an appropriate turnaround time. My presentation will end here. I would like to take this opportunity and wish all of you a safe journey and an enjoyable one and a great success with your studies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Shabangu, for the beautiful presentation. So I hope you paid attention and please share the information with other students because this is very uh, helpful. So now we're going to welcome Mr. Kahiso from Student Counseling. So Kahiso is going to take us through what we call time management. So remember you're studying through distance now and you won't be having lecturers next to you standing in front of you and giving you information. So he's going to take us through time management. Please pay attention and please share with other students. Kahiso, welcome. Thank you so much, Joseka. Uh, uh, I'm Mr. Kahiso Meko, as they've already introduced me. I'm a student counselor from the Florida campus, but we are reachable. That wherever you are, you can drop us an email and we can also direct you to the nearest student counseling center that you can use in your own region. Whether you are in Limpopo or in KZN or in Western Cape or in Gauteng or Northwest, we have offices closer to you that you can always visit. And there are student counselors and assistant student counselors who can be able to assist you. So what I want us to talk about today is the issue of time management. As a student, it is important to know that we are always working against time. There's always time for everything. There's time to register, there's time for applications, there's time for assignments, there's time for exams. So make sure that you adhere to the allocated time and also due dates. It is important that you submit on the due dates. It is important that you also schedule your time accordingly for your studies and also for relaxation purposes. So time management, it is a very rare and important skill that makes one stand out above the rest. So time management is a specific skill that you can develop or that you already need to have and possess for you to be able to succeed in your studies, not only in your studies, but in everything that you do in your life. For example, if you need to go on a date, you need to know the date, the time and the venue where you're supposed to be, at what particular time you're supposed to be there or meeting someone. Or even if you're going for an interview, you need to manage your time accordingly, knowing that if I leave home at this particular time, I'll be able to make it for my appointment. It is better to be early than to be late. So uh, in the business world, we always say, how much money do you want to earn? So time is also money in the business world. They say time is money. 
Some people are paid hourly rate. Some people are paid uh, per day. Some people are paid per project that they are working on. So some people are also paid according to what they deliver. But time is of very much in essence in terms of your studies in UNISA. You will realize that there has been some disturbances with the strikes, with the delay of you getting study materials. But immediately when you get your study material, you need to check your tutorial letters 101. As Mr. Shabungu has said that you will receive study material and tutorial letter 101 is important that you look into that one and check on the assignment dates, you check your examination dates and the times that you're supposed to submit your exams. So make sure that you take care of your time accordingly as it's expected from you. So when we say time versus money, uh, on the other hand, I have money. On the other hand, I have time. Like I indicated that uh, time can be measured in rent and cents or in dollars or in whatever currency that you are using. And time can also be measured in thousands. Uh, excuse me. Uh, money can be measured in, in thousands and millions in with zeros. They, they can also be fees per modules. They can be also salary or your earnings, your weekly wages or your weekly uh, earnings. Time, on the other hand, is measured in terms of hours. So even if you get your ex uh, exam paper or you are given an exam to write, there's time allocated. It can be a one-hour paper. It can be a three-hour paper. So if you don't plan your time accordingly, you might find that when they say time up, you find that you are not finished because you were relaxed and you did not even check how much time is allocated per module, uh, per paper that you are supposed to write. Time is also measured in terms of weeks and seasons, like your tutorials and your exams. So there are time for tutorials, like your face-to-face -face tutorials that you need to attend to. There are times for exams. When time for exams comes, you need to have prepared yourself thoroughly and finish your scope or your, your material that you are reading to prepare for your exams. Time can also be measured in terms of months and years. For example, your higher certificate can take you up to a period of 12, 12 months minimum and a maximum of three years. Degrees can take you a minimum of three years and a maximum of a, a eight years or 10 years. So depending on what degree you are doing. So be careful that you don't miss out on the time because if you relax too much, you might find that they tell you that the qualification that you are registered for is going to be phased out or you have to move over to a new curriculum because you did not complete on time. So make sure that you adhere to the time allocated for you. And there are time differences and uses. There's a time for everything, as I already said initially. There's a time to plan and the time also to execute. Some people, they are forever planning. Some people are always daydreaming, say that, you know, one day is one day. I'm going to do this qualification. I'm going to finish all my exams. But if you don't look at the time and you don't execute, you don't study, you don't put in your assignments, you don't put in the effort and do your group studies, be careful about that, that you might not be able to finish your studies. And there's also time to study. Once you receive your study material, already you check the dates in the calendar, when are you supposed to submit your first assignment, and how much time do you have to prepare for those number of chapters in order to be able to finish and submit a quality assignment. There's also time to relax, and there's also time to take a break. Some people are forever on break, but those who are dedicated and committed to their studies, they put more effort into their studies and take little time to take a break or to relax. There's always time to, to take a breather, so make sure that you don't take the whole day studying because you might find that at the end of the day, you never captured anything in your head. So make sure that you allocate enough time that you need to uh, look into it. And there's also time to put more effort. Uh, closer to exams, you need to do, have time for revision. You need to have time to do what you need to do. Uh, for example, there are people who forget to prioritize. There are those who spend time with their friends all the time they don't study, they come time for exams, uh, they do not finish their studies, they do not finish their scope, and it's time for exams. There are people who are always partying. We don't say partying is wrong, but always allocate time for your studies. Partying is good and nice to refresh yourself, but always look at what is most important for you. And there are also benefits for proper time management. If you manage your time properly, you'll have less stress. That's number one. That's the number one benefit. You'll be in a relaxed mood. Second benefit is that you're going to be motivated and be positive. But people who do not manage their time properly, they find themselves under stress and not being able to achieve whatever goals they have set for themselves. Number three benefit is you'll have great results and outcomes because you manage your time properly. 
and then you are able to relax. Sometimes you even finish your scope before the allocated day for exams and you can get time to relax. Also have, uh, the other benefit is, is that you need to learn to prioritize. Know the difference between what is important and what is urgent. Some people don't understand what is important and what is urgent. What is urgent is what you need to do as in now or that needs to be done as soon as possible. Yes, it might not be important, but you might need to do it urgently at that moment. Sometimes what you need to do is important, but not so urgent. So you can put that one for a bit later. That even if you don't do it at that moment, you can put it later. For example, going to visit a friend might be important to you, but it's not urgent. So visiting him and having a chat about the game that you saw over the weekend or just going to hang out is important, but not so urgent. You can do it any time of your life. So there are some steps that you need to look into. Number one, you need to set your goals correctly. So for you to manage your time properly, set goals. Tell yourself, by this time of my life, I need to be somewhere else. I need to be at this particular place. Or I need to have achieved this particular number of modules before the end of the year or before 2022. Secondly, prioritize wisely. After you set your goals, yes, you have a list of goals that you put down there. But what comes first? What is most important and what is urgent and what is not urgent? And also you need to set time limits to every goal that you set. If you are going to spend 10 minutes in a particular module or you are going to spend 2 hours, make sure that you adhere to those times. Don't overdo it just because you are enjoying it. Don't stick to it only, but also focus on other things. Number 4, you need to take breaks between your tasks. So for you to be able to adjust and to adjust yourself from one task to the other or from one module to the other, you need to have breaks in between so that your mind can also uh, get a reset button. Uh, number five, you need to organize yourself. If you don't organize your stuff, you'll find your, your desk cluttered and messy, not knowing what, where to find what. Even your nose might go missing because you never organize or prepare yourself thoroughly. Please, number six, remove non-essential tasks. Uh, there are some things that are not so important uh, that might not need your attention. So make sure that you remove the distractions around you. Remove the non-essential things that might distract you from executing your plan. Number seven, you need to plan ahead. So don't wait until the rain starts coming down and you want to go and buy an umbrella. Make sure that you buy an umbrella before the time comes. It's just an example with an umbrella. I don't say because of time management you need to have an umbrella. No. As a student, you need to plan your things thoroughly. So, there are also other important elements to consider. You need to learn to say no. Saying no it might be a difficult thing to do. It might be something easy to some people, but you need to have that confidence to say no. There are some things that you need to say no to. There are some things that tempt you, that will distract you, that you need to say no to. You can say no to TV. This time I'm not watching TV. This is my time for studies. You can say no to friends. You can also say no to social media unnecessarily. If you always get distracted by your phone or by the social media, you can put it on flight mode so that you can be able to study. You can also switch off your phone if you need to be able to focus on your studies. You can also uh, say no to overloading and to taking too much tasks. So make sure that you reduce the number of tasks that you need to take and also reduce the number of uh, uh, things that you need to do. Focus on one thing at a particular time. Uh, you can say no also to every party and social life out there. Don't attend all the parties to please everyone. At the end of the day, you are a student. You need to know what is most important to you. And you cannot be everything to everyone every time. So remember that you can only be you and you can only focus on what you need to focus on at that particular time. And there's also dangers of time management, the, the dangers of poor time management. Uh, number one, procrastination. Okay, having to postpone over and over again, if you know that it's a Sunday, you are saying from Monday until Friday, I'll be on my studies, then come Monday, you want to postpone just because you don't feel like studying, please don't. Make sure that you do what you have to do when you have to do it. Number uh, the, the second thing that you need to also be careful about, one of the dangers is delays. Like we had the strike, a strike delayed us. There might be other things that are delaying you, like the late arrival of your study material. Those are the uh, issues of poor time management. Lack of planning. If you don't plan properly, it might cost you uh, from proper time management. 
if you don't plan pr properly, you might find yourself studying chapter one instead of be, you having to be at chapter number eight. And also being careless and too relaxed. So sometimes if you have a proper time management, you'll always do things accordingly, according to your days and the times that you set for yourself. So now, sometimes you find that you lose a track of time of what you were supposed to do. How do you regain your lost time? Is it possible to regain lost time? Or is it not possible? Whatever time that you lost, can you try to squeeze in it somewhere? So, yes, there are different things that you can do to regain the lost time. There might be other things that you were supposed to be doing instead of you studying. So, you can even ask people to help you. You can also go to friends to help you to catch up with your lost time. You can even contact your tutors or your lecturers in terms of what you needed to do at that particular time. So make sure that you try to regain as much time as possible that you lost so that you have enough time for your studies. Make every second count. Tomorrow is never promised to anyone. So don't wait put things uh, for tomorrow. If you have time to do something today, do it today. Don't say I'll do it tomorrow because you never know what might come out tomorrow. Sometimes you plan your things thoroughly and you get a phone call that uh, one of your loved ones is sick or has passed away. That is going to frustrate all your plans. So make time to show, make, make time that you, uh, you, you, you execute what you need to do at that particular time and make time for yourself. Don't always make time for everyone else except yourself. So make sure that you don't overload yourself. Don't, make, don't kill yourself trying to study at the last minute. And this thing of students trying to cross night so that they can catch up on the scope it's also dangerous because you never know what is happening. Things like load shedding, things like uh, traffic jams, these are the things that you have to plan for accordingly. Knowing that if the electricity is not uh, going to be there, then I need to know what to do in terms of covering for all my studies. So with that said, I just want to thank you and I wish you all the best in your studies. Make sure that you are, you are refreshed, you eat well, you sleep enough, and then make sure that you look after yourself. Thank you so much and all the best for 2020. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. If you need to know which office is closer to you that you can refer you to for student counseling, and within student counseling, we deal with different issues. It can be your academic, can be personal, can be issues of relationships, can be any other thing that you need us to help you with. Drop us an email, and we'll also contact you back. Make sure that you include also your cell number on your email that we can get back to you. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you, Kakhiso, for, for that information. Really important information. I'm sure students agree. Please make sure that you take everything that Kakhiso has said. It, it must stick to your mind. If it has to be at heart, let it be. But make sure that you, you pay attention and make sure that you save time. Make sure that you study on time. Make sure that you do everything on time. Don't leave things to last minute because you're going to find yourself in trouble. So with that said, thank you very much, students, for, 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 um, for taking your time and, and being part of this broadcast. When you have queries, please reach out to us. Um, and our email address is fye.unisa.ac.za. And we would also like for you to participate in, in our FYE MOOC. Like I said before, it's a first year experience, massive open online course. So to get to the MOOC, please go to mooc.unisa.ac.za. So once you get there, you go to FYE MOOC 101, FYE MOOC 102, FYE MOOC 103. Please participate in those MOOCs and answer the questions that come with every session. I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy everything. When you have queries or questions, please feel free to also post on our MOOC. If you don't want to post on our MOOC, send us an email at fye.unisa.ac.za. You can also visit our website at www.unisa.ac.za for a slash capital letter FYE. Our website is also available on my UNISA. would like to thank you and wish you all the best. And until next week, please enjoy this broadcast. Please send comments. Put your comments there. I'll respond to you. Thank you, students, and all the best with your studies.